Drones are pretty uncommon and are a relatively new industry, so when you're out on a shoot, you'll often get questions from crew or anybody watching. My name is Arden Shibley, I'm a professional drone pilot, and today we're talking about the 10 most common questions we get about our DJI Inspire 2. Does the drone see the landing pad? We have a big five foot bright orange Hoodman landing pad, and no. The Inspire is pretty good at staying level, but it's not very steady in close range. If it lands right on the edge, it's only thanks to the pilot. What happens if it runs out of battery? Well, the drone tracks its distance from the place that it took off via GPS. It knows how long it'll take to get there and initiates what's called auto RTH or return to home automatically. Not very exciting, I know. How far can it go and how high can it go? It can go up to eight kilometers I've seen on certain tests. We can't fly it that far because you have to stay where you can see the airspace around the aircraft, at least in Canada. It can go quite high as well, 500 meters or 1,640 feet, which is more than double the tallest building in my city and 50 meters short of the top of the CN Tower in Toronto. How much does it cost? Well, if you crash the drone, you might be able to salvage certain parts, like the Cine SSD would probably survive, but if our Inspire two goes in a lake and I never see it again, it's about $10,500 Canadian. This is why we have insurance. Does it come with a camera? No. The Inspire 2 comes with a tiny little first person view camera that's pretty much useless and it doesn't even record. The cameras for the Inspire 2, the X4S, X5S, and X7 cost about one to $4,000 Canadian on top of the cost of the drone. How much does it weigh? About nine pounds or four kilos. It is pretty heavy and it'll make your arm tired if you're carrying it. Does the cold affect it? Yes, but not as much as you would think. The real key is keeping the batteries about 15 degrees Celsius before you fly. Once it's in flight, you're pretty much set. If it's below about 15 degrees Celsius, you might have to apply these insulation stickers. Flight time varies. Our batteries are getting a little bit older now, so we get about 17 to 18 minutes. Keep in mind, we are flying the heavier X7. Finally, why the Inspire 2? Dual operator control and 360 degree views. I can focus on flying the aircraft and the camera operator can keep their eyes on the shot. If you're used to flying a drone all by yourself, the ability to work as a team is a game changer. You can see more of our work in our brand new reel. I'll put it here for your viewing pleasure. My name is Arden Shibley for Yellow House Aerial. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, consider dropping a like or subscribing to see what else we're up to. And I've got one more thing to tell you about. Chromatic aberration is an optical phenomenon where different wavelengths of light bend at different rates when they go through different mediums, like glass, for lenses. As a result, you get color fringes on the edges of objects in an image that have bright or dark edges. If I hold this calibrator up in the edge of the frame and we zoom way in, you'll be able to see color fringes around the edges. Even our eyes have chromatic aberration if you know where to look. Bad chromatic aberration can be a sign of a less expensive system that uses fewer glass elements to try and keep costs down. More expensive lenses like this Nikon 7200 mil use special coatings to try and reduce the amount of chromatic aberration. Here's a still from the X7 on the 24 millimeter DL. If we look at the corner at 200%, you'll see some purple fringing in the corner. Then here's Lightroom's baseline noise reduction and then chromatic aberration processing. Keep in mind this level of processing is not typically applied to video. While a lot of entry-level drones and DSLR kit lenses do suffer from chromatic aberration, it's not always a sign of poor quality, because sometimes, and in very specific scenarios, chromatic aberration is selected as an artistic choice, but 9 times out of 10, it's just a compact lens.